In this video, I will be taking a look at the SCP that got me into the Foundation many years ago. It's also very similar to the back rooms in a few ways, and that is right, in this video, I will be going over SCP-3008, the Infinite Ikea. I'll be talking about its history, its details, and all of the lore surrounding it. Without any more introduction and all that stuff, let's hop into it, shall we? SCP-3008 is a massive IKEA retail store, which is that big place where they have a bunch of furniture in real life, obviously. Its object class is Euclid. Euclid means that the level is sentient in and of itself and can't be predicted. When someone walks into SCP-3008, which is just a normal IKEA store, through the main entrance doors, they will be inside of the regular building at first. Now when you go past that entrance and you lose eyesight of the doors you came through, you will be translocated automatically to the area called SCP-3008-1. Now you won't notice this transition instantly because you won't sense any changes, I mean nothing really happens. The only way you'll know is when you try to go back to the exit only to find that the exit doesn't exist anymore. Interesting. SCP-3008-1 is this area that you've been translocated to. It looks like the inside of a regular IKEA, but it's way bigger than any IKEA store ever. Even though from the outside, it looks like a regular building. The inside is just impossibly big for the walls to contain, Kind of like those tents from Harry Potter that look really small on the outside, but are huge inside. There's no accurate measurement on just how big this IKEA is, but it's estimated to be 10 kilometers squared. However, there has been some tests done with lasers to find out how long it goes, but they don't seem to measure any distances. So this means that it's most likely an infinite space. This 3008-1 area is home to a large but unknown population of people who were trapped here before the SCP Foundation got a hold of it. Apparently, these trapped people have set up basic civilizations and lived together in a couple of different fortifications. These forts were built to keep a creature called SCP-3008-2 out and away from them. So 3008-2s are semi-humanoid creatures that resemble humans. Kind of. But they're extremely exaggerated. Like they'll have two long arms and then short legs. Or they'll have a really big head but a really small body. Some are really tall and skinny, some are short and fat. It just depends. They don't actually have a face, it's just a smooth patch of skin. But they wear IKEA worker uniforms which is a yellow shirt and blue pants. And they're really aggressive at nighttime, especially to the people trapped here, which is why people have to make the makeshift forts and stay together. So the main area, 3008-1, actually has sort of a day-night cycle, but it's not with the sun, because there's no windows, but it's instead with the lights in the ceiling. They'll come on for the daytime, and they'll go off at nighttime. It's during the nighttime, or when the store closes, that 3008-2s start to get really aggressive towards everything on this level. When they're in this rage fit, they'll start to yell phrases in English, like, The store is closing. The store is now closed. Please exit the building. That kind of stuff. Even though they don't have a mouth, they still say this stuff, which is really creepy if you ask me. Once the daytime starts though, the angry 3008-2s will be passive, and they'll just go back to randomly walking around the level. When they're in this daytime state, they won't just attack you, and they also won't even answer you or acknowledge that you exist. You can just walk right past them. But if you attack them or hit them or something, they're obviously going to attack you back. SCP-3008-1 does have several exits to get back to the original IKEA storefront. But the problem is, the exits are always changing and moving around. Sometimes it could be a random door on display in one of these sections of the store, but then it can move and change positions and you know, just have to be found again. Since the SCP Foundation containment procedures began here, 14 people have been able to leave this infinite IKEA. All of these people have had their minds wiped and have been released. There was one pretty scary instance on a redacted date when a regular guy that was trapped inside of the IKEA escaped back to the regular storefront. 10 seconds after he did that, out of nowhere, an instance of SCP-3008-2 also exited and unalived the guy before the SCP personnel could shoot it. 
after it did that, it was also then unalived and the body was studied. This is the only recorded time that a 3008-2 has escaped the infinite Ikea area, but it does mean that it's possible for them to do so, which is terrifying to think about. This guy that was sadly unalived was carrying a notebook where he was documenting his stay in the Ikea. Now, I'm not going to read all the logs because they're pretty long, and I definitely recommend you go check them out if you're interested in that kind of stuff. However, I am going to show you one of his entries that's pretty intriguing. I started talking to people about the stuff that they miss from home during dinner today. Probably not the best idea I've ever had, because everyone seemed pretty down after. A bunch of people here have families. Husbands and wives, kids, dogs. Franklin apparently has a pet llama, although I'm not sure I'd buy that. But apparently some of the people here have some seriously odd gaps in their knowledge. Three of them have never heard of the International Space Station. Two of them seem to think Redacted Redacted was the Prime Minister and one of them had apparently never heard of the Statue of Liberty. I believe them too, they seem just as confused as the rest of us. The more I thought about it though, the more it started to explain a few things. What if the reason no one is looking for all us missing people is because we haven't all come from the same place? This is gonna sound weird, maybe that should be the motto for this place, but what if all the people here have come from different dimensions, realities? Whatever you call it. I've seen enough TV shows to know the drill. Sarah comes from a place where there is no Statue of Liberty. They didn't launch a space station from where Wazem was from. If everyone here came from different places, even the ones that seem identical, there'd be no huge missing persons panic. No mass search. We'd just be a blip. A single missing person in a world of non-stop news. Well, that was a fun train of thought. So yeah, that was a pretty nice entry to his diary, and as you can see, it might confirm that the SCP-3008-1 is a portal to other dimensions or galaxies with other people. Because like this guy wrote, some people didn't know basic stuff about our Earth. So that could have pretty big implications that this area could be a wormhole or a hole of some kind in space to other universes. Pretty neat. But as of right now, there are still an unknown amount of people trapped in SCP-3008-1, and it is pretty rare for people to find the exits. The attacks are getting bad now, almost every night, and with so many staff that the bodies almost pile high enough for others to climb the walls. I think we're in real trouble here. Exchange is... well, I think exchange is done. We got hit pretty bad last night. Not many casualties, but the wall is wrecked. We finally figured out why the attacks have been escalating too. A box of supplies had a chunk of one of the staff in there. No idea how it happened, but apparently a piece of one will draw them as well as a full body too. Too late now in any case. There are too many bodies for us to haul away and still have time to fix the wall before night. Candace has called a meeting. I suspect there will be talk of abandoning exchange, maybe try and get a shelter at checkouts or something. It's already getting late though, and I don't think we'll have time to make it. Maybe some of us will. I was fine for that first week out in the dark after all. But then, how often can I keep getting lucky? I'm only writing this for a sense of closure, I guess. For me, or for anyone who finds this, if this is the final entry here, I hope whoever reading this is doing so from outside this place. My biggest fear, if I do die tonight, I'll just wake up here again in the morning. So that was the last entry from a person that was trapped here in SCP-3008. It's widely assumed that this writer got separated from his group while they were trying to reach the checkout settlement after being chased by a 3008-2 and that's how he happened upon an exit and that's how he disappeared. Now recently on YouTube, there's been a huge found footage craze. It started with Kane Pixels in the back rooms, and it's bled into other online lore systems, like the SCP Foundation. As such, there are many footages depicting SCP-3008 that have been released. And in these footages, you can really see the similarities between this SCP and in the back rooms. I mean, they look identical, especially in the ambience and the entire environment. Now, a while back in 2020, several people wanted this SCP to be the entrance to the backrooms. 
as an official SCP through the 3008 entry. But as of this date, in March 2024, the two fandoms are not canonically tied together. They're different. Nevertheless, the footages make it seem more real because it gives it this tangible media that you can consume and you're not just reading words on a screen, you're visualizing it right in front of your eyes. And I think these footages of 3008 are some of the coolest ones on the platform. SCP-3008 was first uploaded to the Wikidot way, way, way back, six years ago in the summer of 2018. And since its release date, it has become one of the favorites in the fandom. Like, literally. With over 3,200 upvotes, it lands at the 10th highest rated page in the history of the Foundation. Which is absolutely wild. But I can see how it's a fan favorite. It has this perfect mix of otherworldliness, but also realness. We've all been to an Ikea, and we've all realized how creepy it is, and this SCP enhances that melancholic goofiness that gives the SCP Foundation and the backrooms a good quality, a unique quality even. 3008 has also found its way into other pop culture things, like standalone games, Roblox mini games, and plenty other avenues like that. Even people who haven't heard of the SCP Foundation have probably heard about the infinite Ikea that you can get trapped in and never escape. It's really that commonplace in the internet. I personally believe that this SCP is a masterclass of execution on how to make a great piece of internet horror. I think the author did a fantastic job encapsulating all the elements of horror while still adding unique twists and turns and a sense of liminality that just make it unique. It's such a fun read. Check it out if you haven't read the whole thing. I hope you had as much fun listening to me talk about it as I did reading it. Thank y'all for watching until the end. Leave a like if you want more SCPs over here on the Brugley channel. And if you want a specific one, let me know that as well. I'll add it to the list. I have a list on a pencil and paper that I write, and I'll add it there if you want it. Thank you so much for the support across all my channels, Brugley and Spoogly. I cannot thank you enough. They're growing so fast. And I owe it all to you. Just seriously, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Make sure you tell somebody you love them, because life is too short not to. And with all that said, I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.